And here we are, finally, a Chapter 10 Cleaning and Sanitizing. There is no DVD. You have already watched that DVD in Chapter 9. Cleaners must be stable, non-corrosive, and safe to use. To use cleaners correctly, follow manufacturer's instructions. Only use them for their intended purpose. Do not use one type of cleaner in place of another unless the intended use is the same. Guidelines for the effective use of sanitizers. Chlorine. We're not going to worry too much about the uh, water pH or temperatures because there is very little that you can do about that in a three compartment sink. So we're just going to go over the parts per million. Your sanitizer has to be between 50 and 100 ppm. Iodine, 12 and a half to 25 ppm. Okay, so remember that the minimum for the exam is 12.5. Quaternary ammoniums, 500 ppm or less, based on manufacturer's recommendation. Now you will have proprietary test strips for these manufacturer uh, quaternary ammoniums. If you're losing, using the little blue pills, like a, it's called a bar tab, then you will be able to use regular quaternary ammonium test strips. Cleaning and sanitizing. Step one, scrape or remove food bits from the surface, wash the surface, rinse the surface, and sanitize the surface. This is really considered clean in place equipment. Allow the surface to air dry. Very important. Food contact surfaces must be cleaned and sanitized after they are used, before working with a different type of food, after handling different raw TCS foods and vegetables, anytime a task is interrupted and the items may have been contaminated, and after four hours if the items are in constant use. Follow the manufacturer's directions. Unplug equipment, take off removable parts, wash, rinse, and sanitize them by hand or run the parts through a dishwasher if allowed. Scrape or remove food from the equipment surface. Wash the equipment surfaces, rinse, sanitize, make sure the sanitizer comes into contact with each surface, allow surfaces to air dry, and then put the unit back together. Equipment that holds and dispenses TCS food must be cleaned and sanitized every day unless otherwise indicated by the manufacturer. Dishwasher operation guidelines. Keep the machine in good repair. Fill tanks with clean water. Scrape items before washing. Very important. Make sure items are completely dry before stacking or storing them. Check the machine's water temperature, water pressure, and sanitizer levels. Take corrective action if necessary. Provide tools to check the temperature of the items being sanitized in high temperature dishwasher machine. Maximum registering thermometers and temperature sensitive tape. Setting up three compartment sinks. Clean. Sanitize each sink and drain board. Fill the sinks. First sink. Temperature of at least 110 degrees with detergent and water. Second sink is clean water and the third sink is water and sanitizer. Provide a clock with a second hand so that they can maintain the 30 second rule for sanitizing. And again, in a three compartment sink, we scrape items, wash in the first, rinse in the second, sanitize in the third, and air dry items on a clean and sanitized surface. This does not have to be a drain board. It can also be a dish rack as long as that dish rack is empty and nothing is dripping on anything that's already um, nestled and sanitized and dry. When storing clean and sanitized tableware and equipment, store glasses and cups upside down on a clean and sanitized shelf or rack. Store flatware and utensils with handles up. Keep the food contact surfaces of stationary equipment covered until ready for use.
Wet wiping cloths have to be stored in a sanitizer solution in between uses. Change the solution when necessary. Keep cloths that contact raw meat, fish, and poultry separate from other cleaning cloths. This is very important. should have a bucket for each area, really, and change them often. If you're actually using cloths that come into contact with raw meat, make sure that you are changing them and that nobody is using them on other areas of the kitchen. Wiping cloths are used to wipe food spills from tableware. Must be kept dry while in use. Must not contain food debris or be visibly dirty. Cleaning and sanitizing in the operation. Now this is a special cleanup kit. I think this video is too old to really talk about it, but maybe not. I could be wrong. Diary and vomit must be cleaned up correctly. They can carry norovirus, which is highly contagious. Correct cleanup can prevent contamination of food, spreading the illness to others. Operations must have procedures for cleaning up vomit and diarrhea. Procedures must be specific and employees must be trained on these procedures. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go back to that one for a second. Um, it's not telling us anything about the, the cleanup kit, but basically what it amounts to is if you have to clean up, say, diarrhea, and you decide that after your initial cleanup, that you're going to use a mop. That mop head is going to have to be thrown out. So always keep spares. The kit for cleaning up vomit and diarrhea is basically a sand or kitty litter, any absorbent granular material that will help you to pick up the liquid with a lot more ease than if you were trying to clean it up another way. You're going to need a mask, goggles, disposable trash bags. Everything that touched or had anything to do with what you're cleaning up has to be disposal. Even the gloves that you're wearing. If you even buy special gloves that go up to your elbows, they're still relatively inexpensive. And after all, it is an emergency cleanup kit. You're not going to have this happen very often, but everything has to be discarded in a disposable trash bag and taken out of the building. And this includes any mop heads or any other materials that you use to clean up vomit or diarrhea. <clears throat> they need to be closed in the bag and the bag taken directly out to the dumpster. <clears throat> chemical use. Never keep chemicals that are not required to operate and maintain the establishment. Always cover or remove items that can become contaminated before using chemicals. Make sure to clean and sanitize utensils after using chemicals. And always follow the law and manufacturer's directions when using chemicals. Because we do want to make sure that we have a material safety data sheet on all of your chemicals as well in case you get it into your eyes. It's first aid information is the most important information on an MSDS. Storing chemicals keeps them separate from food, equipment, utensils, and linens by spacing chemicals apart from other items. You can partition off chemicals, and chemicals must always be stored below food, equipment, utensils, and linens. Storing chemicals. Chemicals need to be stored in their original container with a label from the manufacturer. They must include directions for use and must be clear enough to read. Working containers must be labeled with the common name of the chemical. Okay, that's going to be like she has pictured here, sanitizer. doesn't have to be specific. We just need to make sure that we know it's not water. See how it's a clear liquid. When creating a master cleaning schedule, list all cleaning jobs in one area in the order performed. Include food and non-food surfaces. List cleaning tools and chemicals by name. Post cleaning instructions near each item. Follow manufacturer's instructions when cleaning equipment. When monitoring a cleaning program, supervise daily cleaning routines. Check cleaning tasks against the master schedule daily. Change the master cleaning schedule based on changes in menu procedures and equipment. 
and ask staff during meetings for input on the program. Okay, that's the end of Chapter 10. That's the end of our training session. Good luck on your exam. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask.